Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Today is Monday, January 3rd, 2022. We'll probably have to take a while to get used to saying 2022, but generally I don't mention the year anyways. Um, but at this point, I might as well mention the years because I have reruns of this uh, series potentially record airing two years in advance, uh, advance of this, so, yeah, this episode very, uh, definitely would rerun somewhere around 2023, um, so I had, for the accountability section this weekend, uh, a pretty effective weekend. Now, I played a little bit of the private matches just to try and catch up. Clearly, there's been four out of out of four days that I just didn't play a private match because I don't want to play Shadowverse every day. I need to play a private match today. I need to play a private match tomorrow. This ends January 9th, so there's plenty of time to actually play 10 private matches. Uh, my only assumption here is that this day 10 will turn into a day 11 the day after that, or maybe they just really wanted you to play a private match every single day in the first 10 days. Um, so I was able to, uh, New Year's Thousand Gold there, I was able to program just about everything I could ever want really um, once I got the scheduling macro program to work to schedule videos that kept, that set the snowball in my luck rolling down the hill um, that this is a terrible mixed metaphor here but that, that started things really going well. So I was able to make a, um, a macro that will just do everything I have to do before I start streaming. And it does it all in about, oh, I'd say less than three minutes. Whereas when I was, every time before I've done a live stream before, I've spent probably somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes just scrolling down Twitter feeds, opening up tabs as far as games we're going to talk about. Um, uh, games that came out on Steam, game, or articles from GameDeveloper.com, Gamatsu, Video Games Chronicles. Now, I still need to scroll down my main Twitter feed just for the random post from a random like video game company that might not be covered. So I'm still spending, oh, I'd say maybe still seven minutes scrolling down my Twitter feed, but that would have been seven minutes on top of another 12 to 15 minutes. On top of that, I've managed to uh, to integrate the Steam Fall list cleanup. So now, going forward, more consistently, it is going to open 10 pages from the Fall list. The next 10, I'm going to look at those at the end of the stream and then um, that will consistently every stream have have some followers clean up um, and that is gonna help balance things out and just keep maintain momentum I suppose if we're going really long I can uh, remove everything the way I was going to originally program all of these macros and I'm not going to get deep, deep into the details is I was going to have them go through Twitter, but Twitter's website in particular is designed using a lot of JavaScript and it's not even a lot of JavaScript. The truth is it's designed specifically so you cannot scrape information or manipulate the information in, in any effective way. Um, so I, scrolling down specific Twitter feeds just wasn't working like it because what happens is you scroll down and it loads more into RAM as you scroll down using JavaScript so 
the lower the next page or the next part when you're scrolling down the feed isn't actually there until you it is visibly there so you can't access it you can't call for it um, but then after spending probably six hours trying to get that working I, I realized why am I trying to get this working let's just cut out the middleman and directly go to the websites so I made a custom script for what's on Steam first which you all of these do about the same thing they have a a very simplistic comma separated value uh, for file that looks for the name or the link of the last thing that was open so whatever we talked about in the last stream it it saves that and since since what's on steam and video games chronicles and and gamatsu and gamedeveloper.com are going to put the newest things at the top you just start at the very top work your way down until you find a match or it's just in case you never find a match I, I put some hard limiters on there to not open more than say 50 articles there's not really a scenario even if it was e3 where i would actually want to talk about 50 articles in one stream i guess we're still playing runecraft here to start off with um and then once it gets to the bottom it saves the first thing that it found the first article as the new stopping point for the next time uh, because s saving the last article as the new stopping point would actually just be the article right above the uh, the last stopping point uh, because it's first going chronologically backwards now on the steam follow list it's a little bit different it's alphabetical there so i can in that case just alphabetically look for the title of the last game i looked for um, because the follow list adds has things added and removed all the time uh, there is my quarry won't a, escape that easy um that there is a danger of specifically like just saving a number but you can have some efficiency there like the odds of reducing the the follow list by more than 10 uh spaces before the last place we looked at is almost zero like that would only happen if i spe specifically manually went through the follow list and just started reducing a whole bunch of stuff uh, so what I can do to save myself some time since there's probably about a thousand things on the follow list I can say take where the last thing was by name and save the number there so if a game called like fancy fighter existed and it was in the hundredth spot when we last looked at it and um, what you can do is say all right well take that hundred spot reduce it to 90 start looking at 90 for something called fancy fighter and when you find it that's where your start point is and in this case you don't start at the top and go open all the tabs down you start start at the save spot and you just go 10 forward um, opening 10 paths tabs and yeah you know, since all of the things on the follow list need to be manually looked at me there's no good reason to go down the path of trying to further curate things I thought about that where I could specifically just see if something's in VR and skip that or see if something uh, came out less than six months ago and skip that but in general I think it's easier just to have a human look at that the only thing that really didn't succeed in what is just a incredibly successful weekend and, and maybe I'm underselling it but like just a major 
uh, efficiency here has potentially been gained, or ha I think it's been gained, um, is I couldn't modify the Steam pages, which is not 100% accurately. Uh, I found several extensions. Um, it turns out using UI Vision, Selenium, you can't actually change the code of the HTML. I thought you could, uh, but you can't. Like, so I was confused about that. I'd done something that seemed almost like you could do that, and it conflated that in my mind. Uh, but the, there are some things that you can do to change the CSS style sheets, um, which I think that's what CSS stands for, custom style sheets. And so I can move the price tag here up and to the right over here, which is exactly where I would have wanted it. But I can't move this text out of this column. I can, can modify it with CSS and make it look really ugly. I, I didn't get any further than that, but I cannot get it to break outside of this column um which yeah that doesn't really help because ideally you would want this to be right about here because there's a bunch of dead space here and then uh this right about here there is a ton of dead space in general. Unless the game has an incredibly long title that goes all the way here, you can you can almost always have the text happen here. Um, there is an entire row here that has nothing being shown. And I know I'm zoomed in a little bit, but it doesn't get any better uh, otherwise. So... I can't really change the, the view. See, if you get down to like 100% zoom, as I have the page now, you still just have a lot of emptiness on either side of the page. Uh, and you still have just emptiness. This part here is never filled in with anything. I've never seen it filled in. Um, this scroll bar really should probably just be a vertical bar here and a vertical the bar here and you could get um, like just more spacing that are. way the background the blue background certainly could it go I, I still think it is slowly slowly getting a lot lighter and lighter away from actually being blue um, Arguably, you don't even need these screenshots here at the bottom. It could just be a vertical bar and a vertical bar on either side to go left or right. Uh, but yeah, you have a ton of empty space here. You usually have a, a decent amount of empty space here. You have an, an empty space here a lot of times. Then you have this break and then you have these double columns. And if we were to zoom out even further, it's not like Steam changes the way it looks. Like, it's not until you actually get above 125% zoom that then things start to break and look in a different way. And it's more of a vertical thing. And... Even at that, you have a huge amount of space. The Q button doesn't fit on screen. And then everything else is oddly moved around. What's really funny is that the bar on the right, seemingly in this zoom, is above the bar on the left, which I would expect that to be the very opposite. Hmm. Hmm. 
Like there's definitely a a better way to make all of this information displayed and a need for just a store re rethink. And it very well is just that they're on there's so many games on Steam that they're afraid to to put out a new theme. A lot of collapsible information in particular. Not everything needs to be visible at once because it, it's just too much. It's overwhelming. Um, it like this and then this description should probably be a collapsed read more button to lead to this uh this about the game and the first chapter the first paragraph first for your sentences here should be the exact same always as this and so then you could collapse the about this game which is the one thing that that takes the most space and even here it is collapsed and still not collapsed enough um, let's see, system requirements generally don't need to be shown, the more like this generally doesn't work anyways, um, what curators say, clearly there were different teams that wanted different things, the share embed flag buttons really should be up here, like, that would make a lot more sense as if there was a share embed and flag. But you'd have to be careful not to not to hide the flag button. Although maybe more games getting flagged would be better for the storefront in general. There needs to be an integration of the idea of, is this in your language? For instance, this Korean game is not my language. So there should be something that's, that says something as simple as recommended for you somewhere around here and then you click more and it goes we were recommending this because it's in your language because it's in genres you've played before uh, because it meets your system requirements um, all, all of those things combined are generally telling you the same thing the, the game is relevant like, you've got that kind of separated all around here. Um, yeah. And as for the specific game, obviously, uh, it's not in English, so we'll not put that on the follow list. I do have a few tabs that I manually opened, so we'll have to cover over that, cover that news. Um, The world called, and I answer. So, Run, somebody hide, at alternative magazine online.co.uk has a featured article celebrating 25 years of Broken Sword with Charles, Charles Cecil, managing director of Revolution Software. Which that might be interesting, but there is also the problem while the first Broken Sword game is much beloved, like. Every subsequent Broken Sword game was was lesser liked and went more and more off the rails. I think I may still have a Broken Sword game that I haven't played, like Broken Sword 5. Here you can also see they're talking a lot about Beneath a Steel Sky and the remake of that. Like There, there is almost an ar ar argument to making remaking rebooting the broken sword series but they, they really gotta think down the path of um, making George and Nicole like really romantic interests that really get together um, at the end of the first story and become adventurers together for any sequels instead of the will they won't they nonsense that they did and or get rid of George completely and just have Nicole uh, as the main character 
this is kind of an interesting thought, certainly. Cyberpunk is apparently the winner for Outstanding Story Rich Game in the Steam Awards. Should they even mention it? Like, I think you have to, but I think you don't make a big deal about it. You mention it on Twitter, which at this point, Twitter is kind of dead. I went through my Twitter feed, by the way, and I unsubscribed from quite a few uh, places that I only was ever subscribed to because I had entered some kind of contest to win things, which I've given up on as trying to win anything. Um, there used to be a day before the internet um, where you could win contests a lot more, more but now that everything is show me the limit is done online or the submissions are taken online there's just too many bots and and too many people entering in the first place so i would say yeah you can probably still win uh a small raffle at a church or something because the odds are very high there but any anything run by a big corporation anything done between in an entire state or multiple states. Your, your odds are just so low. And frankly, a lot of the stuff that's available to win has long since stopped being anything of interest to me. Um, whereas when I was younger uh, and a kid, I would have loved to win just about any bit of garbage. Uh, Bloomberg has this article. The next video game from Bioshock's creator is in development hell. Ken Levine's highly anticipated project was supposed to be out in 2017. People who worked on it explained how things went awry. Generally, the idea is that Ken Levine is a very demanding creator. Um, and he's driven out stuff he's, a, he's kind of a bad manager from um, from from what they're saying it says Levine is a flawed manager who often struggles to communicate his vision and alienates or browbeats subordinates who challenge him or fail to meet his expectations say current and former employees most of whom who request anonymity for f they feared repercussions which Okay. Um, isn't this, though, the same situation that every director and artist out there has? Like, isn't that how it always goes? Is that anyone with any artistic vision is is t has a tendency to be a pain to deal with? Um... And you can clearly say you it, it's almost a matter of opinion to say someone struggles to communicate their vision because it may be that he is it could could be just the other person fails to comprehend things too I think humans in communication are pretty bad always so that's weird Alienating or browbeating people are, are pretty pathetic uh, complaints, particularly when you look at the the state of like the video game industry and the Activision Blizzard complaints and threatening to kill people. For instance, like the idea of somebody just alienating someone or browbeating them is pathetically normal in any job, uh, uncommon. Not that it's acceptable, just that it hardly sounds like I live by the sword. this is a case where is the he's that man. terrible of a management. I faith in my blade. Take that. Hmm. No now, let me add what I know in the past, or what I've heard in the past, and so maybe this was just rumor too, is that Bioshock Infinite in particular was supposed to be a fairly different game from what it was and I'm 
kind of feel like EA or whoever the publisher was actually took control of the project to actually get it done and probably cut a lot of the ideas and, and pushed it out the door to make Bioshock Infinite a very a much more stock standard first person shooter game than what I what I think it was originally promising to be or what it actually was. I would say say also when thinking about Bioshock Infinite and, and its quality, take the t surprise twist which people were far too enthralled with out of the conversation uh, in that case and just think of it as a standard RPG, very light RPG first person shooter game with gun in one hand and magic in the other. Um, and it's, a per when you look at it from that perspective, it's pretty stock standard. Um, I don't think it's as good as Bioshock 1. It is definitely not really touching as well on the concepts of how could you really create a society like Rapture um, in, in Infinite because the, the floating sky city in Infinite basically just can't exist and it is basically telling a story of just racism um, and that's it where Bioshock was much more heavily influenced from the idea of Ayn Rand books and Ken Levine fully admits that he was reading and obsessing a bunch of uh, or on uh, obsessing about a bunch of Ayn Rand oh, styles of thoughts um, and he, he really only had one good novel in him it feels like I'm a prisoner of this world's um, whims. so I could definitely say the pressure is very much on Ken Levine to make a good um, Um, the, I, I imagine the pressure is very high on Ghost Story Games and Ken Levine to make something that's not even going to be better than Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, but probably as they slip behind um, and get later and later has to get be even better and better because the anticipation is raising whereas he's done actually a fairly decent job to try and kill anticipation by changing his company name by by basically not working um, under the same guys as the actual create the company name that built that made Bioshock One. Arguably, the Bioshock series was has been rushed, for better or worse, with Bioshock Two, and he definitely, if not Ken Levine, other creators who worked on uh, Bioshock One, definitely just pissed all over the efforts of a different company making Bioshock Two. Uh, And arguably, I would prefer to see an Infinite 2 uh, over whatever this new Ken Levine game is. And I didn't even really like Infinite that much, but there would be slightly more safety in that. And it would give them an opportunity to move the story forward there as much as they might try and do that How much is in it for me? I believe this new Ken Levine game is supposed to be Weakness, it's rumored to be in like Antarctica My, aren't you delicious? Uh, they say My that there's a running gag uh, if they don't kill you first. that persuading Levine was so difficult that former employees joked about engaging in conception oh, I guess the idea of inception, um, plant ideas that the target he thinks he came up with, um, and then here you have a whole 
paragraph that has nothing to do with the article at all. It's just like, oh, we're referencing Inception so we can write about something we know better about. This is probably a problem that if I read more Bloomberg articles in general, we would see. Um, because, like, here you have a real example of Bloomberg giving you a real article with lots of... Uh, um, uh, with lots of paragraphs and actual dialogue and, and we just name uh, n just n we never get that at other video game people uh, sites and it's definitely probably for the better that we don't get that because there's just uh, article on top of article on top of article and they definitely are giving the idea here that the longer the article is, the more they have to say, but I'm not really sure they did. I think the first couple of paragraphs would have done it. Hmm. Um, and there is still a whole bunch of stuff here. This is Jason Try. And clearly I need to see if I can get rid of some of this stuff. Um, so like System Shock 2 took a, a 1.5 years and then inherently there, there's kind of not that much need to even care too much about an untitled Ghost Story game um, when we know the System Shock 2 and System Shock reboots uh, remakes or and remasters the like, we're going to have that gap filled in, certainly, as far as shock games. Um, but yeah, Bioshock took five years, which is a year longer than usual. Bioshock Infinite took five years. And then this has taken seven and a half years. Which, two and a half years, you could just subtract that uh, from the pandemic. Um... Which I wouldn't be surprised if we are less than 12 minutes from this game. Uh, 12 months from this game being released. Red Dead Redemption 2 took 7 years but wasn't really in development for 7 years. Halo Infinite took 6 years. I don't know if Halo Infinite was actually in development for 6 years either. Um, like the, the whole idea of Ken Levine leaving i think was to to take his time and do it right where i would argue infinite isn't that game and so maybe we would never get a um maybe we would never actually get a another uh bioshock or System Shock style game from Ken Levine and maybe that I would be fine with that. I would like it to be um, hmm. I would be fine with that. I think it's kind of important also if you were to compare say Ken Levine from Um, if, if you're the compare Ken Levine to the Fable creator like he's not too far from the Fable creator but he actually delivers I think more often when actual games are made um, he doesn't seem to over promise and just come up with new ideas on the fly a couple of years into development as at least not as much as the fable creator um he isn't todd howard either where um where he todd howard hypes up nothing and then really has nothing to show um for the most year after year as far as 
the next Elder Scrolls game. I would say in a lot of ways, Todd Howard and Ken Levine are probably a little bit hero-worshipped a little more than they should be. But I think it's important to A, realize that Jason Schreier in particular is not in the business of reporting news as much as he is in the business of making himself look like a legitimate news reporter in his desperate struggle to make video game news reporting feel and look like every other Bloomberg article when video game news is just not that detailed and in depth. Uh, second part, B, I think it's important to recognize that every act, a big writer and director and even actors in Hollywood are very much like Ken Levine and such. They're just Hollywood people. They, they all kind of suck. They all have big egos. It comes with the territory. Um, if there is some magical way to have a nice guy who can run a business and, and make it be successful, I've never seen it. I've never heard of a business where um, where the boss is 100% the nice guy and everybody loves him and there, nobody has a negative word to say, with, say about it. I wish that was the case. I think inherently the capitalistic greed system creates problems here, whereas if Ken Levine simply was given universal basic income or a grant of system, and he was just given enough money to pay all of his employees and have them all work on what they want to work on and create the art they all together want to work together, that would be nice to have just an artist co-op uh, co collab there but that's not the system the video games are based on they're based on timelines budgets deadlines um like employees and manager relationships uh i imagine ken levine would probably adapt to the idea of uh, he's just getting his needs met and he can collab with people he wants to collab with um and arguably if he is so that difficult to actually work with, then nobody would collab with him and that would just be the end of it. He would have never made the first game. Um, but he clearly has vision, as much as Steven Spielberg, even at one time George Lucas, uh, had some level of vision. Um, so, you're, you're really, I think, in an article like this, trying to hold him to a higher standard than is realistic, something you wouldn't hold any writer or director to. And if I was in charge of making a game, a lot of people wouldn't like me. They would they would say I'm difficult to, to work with. They would say uh, I have trouble communicating my vision, um, which it's always hard to for people to see other people's vision, so that's really standard um, they they would probably say I browbeat some people or alienate some people and yeah in my own interactions in the past there definitely have been people I didn't want to deal with that could turn around and say I was alienating them because I was literally trying not to deal with those people um, an article like this is really coming from an unfair perspective that employees are perfect and the manager is uh, is is the one that's always the problem and i hate to defend management ever but you, you gotta meet them halfway it's like yeah employees can alienate and browbeat people too uh, and management like, in fact, it's pretty much almost required that as a employee, you should alienate and browbeat management. Uh, even in their own article, they're saying that. Um, like, that when they're talking about incepting ideas into them, how is that not recontextualized as browbeating him into agreeing with what they want to do 
um, they clearly alienate Ken Levine as much as they claim he does because they they say he's difficult to work with. Um, it, it, if you look at it from a two-way street, it sounds like these are just standard art, auteur artist people who have have actual desire to do good. And when you have actual desire to do something artistic and good, there tends to be standard conflict. Um, so an article like this is kind of pointless. It, it sounds like very standard things um like it, it very much sounds like are you in need of medicine um these are just very very standard um, i'm coming for you um very very standard complaints you would have around the boss and not nothing more it's nothing worthy of actually reporting on. Like, maybe when the next game comes out, if it comes out, um, there would be a bigger... Uh, a way to, in retrospect, look at that. Uh, but at a certain level, you, you people just don't need to nor want to see how the sausage gets made. Uh, so... If the next game is good, I, I would say, well, that just happens. There, there's a high, high chance that this effectively being the third game made actually by Ken Levine in the Bioshock series or third game in a row made by Ken Levine. Um, there, the third game in trilogies tend to be pretty bad. And he's probably keenly aware of that idea. Um, becoming a new sacrifice. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'd even call him particularly that difficult to work with. Um, now, I've defended Ken Levine a lot today. So let me try and balance this out by saying I do think he's an idiot. I do think his vision is stupid, and it is a barely first-year college-level understanding and interpretation of Ayn Rand and economics. Um, it is definitely an edgelord concept when you look at Bioshock, um, and it's not really showing, making any good arguments. It's just kind of showing a very specific Shining hope. outcome only in the sense that if there was this magical uh, element called Adam that gave you magic powers and then the entire society focused around Adam and then there was a bunch of crazy people that went crazier because of Adam and if you could and would build a city on the bottom of the ocean and if you would get a, a Andrew Ryan and a few other very specific people to be the main players in that society. Like, there's just so many very specific elements that have to be in there that you're not really making a general presentation or argument around an economic system as much as you're telling a narrative. And in all fairness, that is pretty much what Ann Ryan did, too. Uh, like, Atlas Shrugged is kind of a great idea, and the same idea. What if all the smart people just decided to leave society completely and let the rest of the world burn? Um, it, it starts from a very, very simplistic assumption that, that everybody would agree with that, and that the characters that are in Atlas Shrugged would act and be the way they are written. And it's not like it's really based on historical elements. Andrew Ryan in Bioshock is not supposed to represent, like, somebody specific. Not even Anne Rand herself. And I, I would also criticize Anne Rand's writing as being written very much from the perspective of 
being mistreated and abused by a bad communist uh, socialist system and then writing stories as just straight propaganda against uh, socialism communism uh, in in such an extreme swing that you're you've become that you became insanely pro-capitalism uh, to 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 too much of an extreme it's definitely also written from the perspective of pure capitalism should work and succeed and should happen whereas no pure economic system should really exist it should be mixes of both uh, the United States is not a purely capitalistic society either um, we wouldn't have Medicare and Social Security if we were pur purely capitalistic um, we wouldn't even have like FDIC insurance on banks if we were purely capitalistic moving on uh, I will also to defend Ken Levine a little bit more say even though he is probably an idiot and doesn't really understand what he was writing about in a Bioshock he writes it from an edgy like college kid first year college kid perspective which is a fine perspective to make a first person shooter video game around anyways like I, I am more than happy to play edgelord style games because let's face it while the video game age uh, average gamer is getting older and older we need to bring in those edgy teenagers teenagers and refresh uh the blood uh, of the player base so yeah uh sonic the hedgehog green hill zone is available on lego for 70 dollars arguably this set is a little cheap for 70 dollars that's not let's see how many pieces it is a thousand one hundred and twenty five that piece count is only that high because of the way this is built. Um, I'm seeing a lot of pieces here that would have been in the Minecraft set. A lot of one by one tiles here to get the piece count up. Um, I've seen this crab built before in Lego. Uh, the rings and the clear transparent sticks are pretty simplistic to trees pretty simplistic this sonic probably is the exact same model from the sonic lego dimensions getting each of the chaos emeralds here i'm not sure these are actually the colors of the chaos emeralds i just am not that familiar with sonic to know um, this is an interesting Winter experiment in making something float that's a bit bigger. Um, and I did see a mod where you can take some of the extra pieces and have Sonic hang upside down as he's running around this loop. Um, I don't know what more you really want. You've got some extra printed things here. I don't know what more you really would want from a Sonic game in much like the Nintendo Power Block set. I, I just don't know if video games and Legos cross over particularly well. Um, let's see if we can find the Nintendo Power Block set here. Nope. Um, shop. Sets by theme. Spider-Man, Mario should be somewhere here. The day of reckoning is nigh. Interesting. Lego Super Mario. See, they they went for an actual playset with the Mario things, but I don't think that really succeeded. Uh, but it does certainly make it stand out as its own different thing um, where this Sonic really is not doing anything and while I'd say the NES set here which 
harkens back to an actual NES and an old school TV and a flat 2D Mario is interesting. This question mark block set goes for more of a micro scale but shows more. The false will and sink and the true will rise. The, if the prices oh, were comparable, strength. seeing the six or seven levels of so Sonic, which I assume exists, uh, in one set probably would be better in a micro scale. But then you lose a lot of detail in the micro scale also. Um, and the power block is not like really replicatable in Sonic. It would be a ring or chaos emerald with a bunch of micro scale things on the inside. And so you can see here Mario and Princess Peach when a micro scale really looks pretty bad. And that has been the reason why I really had no interest in getting this. Arguably, Super Mario 64 is just more iconically memorable than any Sonic game. Because most people who played Sonic made it through the first or second level and that's it. And it's the levels are too long and linear to really make sense of that. So, yeah. Off the top of my head... You would have the Green Hill Zone, the, the grassy area in Sonic, and then you would have kind of an industrial area. And I think later on there's probably a lava area. Uh, and then there's kind of a casino area, um, maybe a pipes underwater area. A lot of them very similar the looking. And I answer. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. So if, if there was going to be four or five Sonic things, each for $70, and then the real display only works when you connect those side to side, the, that's, man, that's $280 for a collection of sets that still probably won't look that interesting. Um... So, I, I'm still very iffy as far as whether or not LEGO is going to succeed using video game licenses in this way. Whereas the LEGO video games succeeded very well by taking movie licenses and turning them into video games. Um, if there was a TT Games based on Sonic and Mario, that too would probably work fairly nicely. But I doubt they'd ever be able to get that license. And at this point, they don't have enough manpower to, to make a game like that. Moving on with the news, I'm not moving particularly fast today. Um, ScumVM has a new version, version 2.5.0 released. This is, uh, well, no, it's 2.5.1, codenamed California. Most notable changes is they've added the scalers in the OpenGL mode. Those ad main high quality things fix several ba bugs in the last. Sherlock lost files of Sherlock Holmes, made the sound for Sam and Max more accurate, improved graphics for some Macintosh game, scum games, implemented more renderers for the longest journey, and made many enhancements to the Little Big Adventure. Um, and they fixed the dreaded bug on the World of Zin startup. Um, so. Apparently they codename everything here. Uh, they codename this Californium based off of the atomic uh, metal element Californium, which has an average atomic mass of 2.251, which I think that they can't probably do that every time. Because... I don't think everything has an 
average atomic mass that is equal. I don't think atomic whatever element 99 is, since Californium is element 98, has an average mass of 252. But I could be wrong about that, I really don't know. Uh, moving on, barely news, but a UK games industry legend, Ian Livingstone, is going to be knighted. He's been a retailer, author, game developer, executive, and lobbyist, so probably most likely been a lobbyist lately. What games did... He co-founded Games Workshop. He made a video game called Eureka. I don't recognize this game. He's on the board of Sumo Group. I recognize that company. Um, you definitely get to this point. Uh, specifically being knighted means nothing. Particularly to somebody in the United States. But I don't think it should mean anything even in the UK. Um, it, it really is just an example of the ridiculous class systems that are still established and maintained in the UK. Um, and the monarchy in general. Uh, Video Games Chronicles is still doing its 2020 previews, even though we're in the 2020. At this point, Starfield needs to mark a new era for Bethesda on Xbox. Um, I kind of don't feel like any of the previous Bethesda games between Fallout 3 and... Um, I don't think there were any Bethesda games before that. Well, I think Oblivion actually was on, on Xbox 2. But I would say specifically... As someone who played the games on, um, who, who played Fallout 3 on the Xbox 360, I don't feel like there was too much of a problem there. Now, yes, you don't have mod support for a game on Xbox, and I don't expect that even if Starfield were to come out, that it would have mod support on the consoles. Uh, or if it is, it's going to be a very limited marketplace style. You have to submit your mods and then we're going to sell it as DLC concept, which I definitely don't want to see Microsoft embracing Bethesda's bad habits like that and Cinemax's bad habits like that. Um, but I think for the most part, controller support for Fallout 3 was fine. Uh, Skyrim controller support was fine. Um, I don't think I was really getting that worse of an experience. Visuals wise, probably. Um, but I don't know what specifically um, they're even looking for. And I don't think even they know what they're looking for with this article. Because clearly they just pounded these articles out uh, very quickly. It's like whether from a storyteller tell perspective or gameplay one, Bethesda looks to shape its new image. Um, in a lot of ways, it's not even Starfield that would be the game to look towards in that case. Because Starfield would have been in development for the most part of its life before Microsoft acquired it. It's going to be the actions after Starfield, um, in the publishing of Starfield, the releasing of Starfield and the development of the next Elder Scrolls games and how Microsoft is really going to turn things around. And I think, at the very least, there should be some some ceremonial actions taken by Microsoft to make it look like Bethesda isn't just being run by Zenimax and running itself the same way it did, in which we're going to... Microsoft comes out clearly and says, we, we actually have strict deadlines and expectations we've set down for them and we will be uh we won't be tolerating schedules being slipped and missed 
uh, really a statement like that is probably all Microsoft can do and should do at the moment is just to say no we own this company we're going to do things differently here and we're going to actually make sure good games come out of course it's kind of counter intuitive with um with Bethesda games anyways because what they really need to do is probably fire a lot of people at Bethesda and have a different team working on the Fallout Elder Scrolls um, licenses um, Starfield licenses having different companies work on those projects so that they actually get made in better ways uh, something they could announce is the abandonment of their old engines in favor of the unreal engine um, that would be a smart announcement but also just having other people work on the game and de-emphasize the focus on systems um, playing a little bit of fallout 3 which i don't think i even mentioned last night it really goes to show how while there is a lot of topsoil to fallout 3 once you dig past that topsoil of their systems and their mechanics it falls apart like there, there is no bedrock there um, once you break the economics in fallout 3 there's no reason to engage in the economics uh, once you realize that there are entire quests that just feel unfinished, that can only give you negative karma, can only kill a character, that there's ways to end a quest and then lock yourself out of getting perks and items. Um, there, there needed to be a way to do everything with every playstyle, and that's just not existent in Fallout 3. And you... The game is practically sold on the thought that that is the way the game works uh or at least it tries to give you the impression that's the way the game works is that you can do anything and still get every still get every, every item and every park and it's just not true like the real way to play fallout 3 is to have a very detailed walkthrough guide and make sure you plot and plan everything out there really isn't a way to play as a bad guy uh and have a good experience in the game that there, there really isn't a way to play as a sneaky thief and and experience everything um, or a killer or an assassin or a slaver like none of those really work um, the vast majority of the good content is actually in the mainline storyline so i thought i missed a lot in the game and I don't think I really missed as much as I thought I did although I definitely did miss some things like Oasis is a location and a whole quest I don't believe I even saw Oasis and it's kind of crazy that you can miss a mainline quest when there's only about a hundred quests <clears throat> moving on video games chronicles has an article says Mizuaki says the Elden Ring's graphics team felt extra pressure due to the Demon Souls PS5. Check out this article if you want to. I'm going to try and burn things. Rare developers are reported have been reportedly been spotted unlocking Xbox uh, achievements for GoldenEye. Which... Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. That there is possibly, I, I would not be surprised if maybe they finally decided to, to let Goldeneye be re-released and renegotiated the license. It really is just a matter of the licensing issue. And it's not like right now James Bond movies are making as much money as they possibly could, so... Plus, it really doesn't hurt current James Bond movies to release a remaster of an old GoldenEye game. I feel like once that remaster comes out, people are going to play it and realize, oh, well, this was fun when I was playing with my friends uh, a decade ago, but it's not really that good of a game. Um, 
it's not a remaster that Goldeneye needs. It needs a full remake, a full uh, reboot of a potential series of James Bond first-person shooters. And I don't know why you specifically pay the license for that when you could just make a spy first-person shooting series. Otherwise, and take note that nobody is bothered to do that. So clearly it, it hasn't sold. Like, people would rather play ma as Master Chief in uh, sci-fi first-person shooters oh, or really Battlefield games in World War II first-person shooters versus spies in a modern time shooting things. And it probably is worth investigating why that is the case and experimenting a little bit more, but it, it doesn't seem to be a priority for anybody. Uh, Video Games Chronicle says Square Enix says it hopes NFTs and blockchains became a major trend in games. Uh, this is clearly another thing that the president said in a new year letter like he didn't even say it during a shareholders meeting um, but yeah people that don't understand nfts seem to really really want nfts because they are just foaming at the mouth to make money um, here we have a game we can say no to that's 2.99 english only the midnight wind here we have Total War Warhammer. One of the things about what's on Steam's main page though is that it highlights games a little bit more when there's a change even if the game is old. Which means we'll start to potentially get a different mix of games. Some older games want with new updates. Here we have a game called Miss Intelligence which it's an escape the room game. I think we already even talked about this game. It's Chinese only. Um, so we may have already looked at all of these games. These were ones I manually opened just to make sure I didn't miss any. Yeah, this one's already on the fall list, so obviously I looked at it. This one looks like nothing. Um, it also occurred to me that there is a possibility that adult games were being posted to what's on Steam and then those posts when translated to Twitter were getting filtered out. So we might be seeing a lot more adult games, which maybe means that my entire theory and perspective could be wrong. I don't think it's wrong, but I am open certainly to the idea that I could be wrong. If all of a sudden we start to see by using this new system that adult games are coming, these are all things we've already looked at. Um, yeah, if we start seeing adult games are coming out like every single day and they were just being censored for some reason on the to the weekends uh, only on Twitter that would be weird and I don't believe that's the case because why would Twitter let posts of adult games or links to adult games fly on the weekends and then not other times it almost seems interesting I'm gonna put this on the follow list 1999 English allegedly full audio it's like a box pushing spelling game. But I'm not sure there's enough of a game there. Let's see. Here we have Chinese driving test simulator, which I think we can pretty much say no to. Hmm. Do Chinese drive on the left side? With the steering wheel on the left side? Hmm. I don't, I don't know if they do or not. Hmm. Well, what 
regardless, this is 99 cents in Chinese only and nothing of interest. Here we have At Home Alone Final, which is some kind of horror RPG pixel game, psychological horror game. Free to play English and Chinese. Hmm. And they're saying, if there's some strange phenomena quitting suddenly during the game, don't worry, this is normal performance, not a bug. Which I bet it's a bug. Hmm. Well, if this looks like something of interest to you, check it out. But I'm, I'm not going to bother to put a free game like this. House of the Closed Doors. Looks like garbage. Five ninety five dollars and nine cents. What I did is I opened up the new tabs in a the separate window, so I'm gonna have to switch over to the separate window uh, to cover the news some more. This does potentially also make a case. This perfect balance looks uninteresting. Dollar seventy nine English only. Um, it does potentially potentially make a case where I will um, I will actually if I ran the code every single day instead of just right before I streamed I might have one section in which I talk about some news and then cover a bunch of steam games in the fall list and then another section where we go back to news i don't think that's something i want want to see happen though because i, I want to have five discrete sections that i can control the flow of fairly well and if i'm jumping around that's fine but i don't want to have a group of tabs and then from one site and then some steam tabs and then a group of tabs for the same site here we have a game called Search the Galaxy, which looks like nothing. $9.99. Hmm. Then I'm still doing the Discovery queue and the Steam sale is you dare still the pretty bad. Um, well, no, the Steam sale is still going on. Um, but... One of the things I definitely would say about the Steam sales for other people, I could definitely see a case where you would potentially want to play or purchase games right about now after a week of, um, of recovering from your spending in the holidays. It's not really going to help you, though. Um, that much so but it's nice I will say that that they gave you this same time if only they could guarantee the dates valve is kind of bad about moving its dates around one of the things about these curator things is they they definitely are suggesting adult games to me that are older which makes an argument that the adult games consistently sell after the outside of their uh, launch window whereas um, whereas otherwise the curator is just trying to advertise very very new games to me and I will say also they are only but once again, if you look at the Discovery Cues every single day, which I wouldn't waste my time on that, it seems to me like they are mostly only talking about um, Western adult games. It doesn't feel like they actually promote through the curator feeds. Too many Eastern adult games, which maybe, maybe there's a difference there, because the Western adult games on the curated feeds are also the ones with the screenshots that are pure nudity. So I hate to help scammers, but if I was going to make a scam, 
game on Steam, clearly you want to make a Western art style adult game that has straight up uh, pornographic images in the screenshots for the long term sales there if you're looking for long term sales. Now, if you're a true scammer, I suppose you want to get as much initial sales, which probably you'd still do the same thing. Um, but at a certain point, why even do a scam when you could just as easily also make an actual game? So here's the new tab. We have a Gometsu article with the New Year's cards and messages. Um, I think we had already talked about this. Yeah, this was the one with the collapsible articles and it all being in Japanese. So we really couldn't get too much out of that. Uh, Cyber Connect is going to announce a new game in February. And Nikom Games to announce a new RPG project SAS on January 6th. And we had already talked about Search the Galaxy. Dead in Aegisian. Or Aegis. Looks like a visual novel. From Jast. It's free, so I guess check it out. It's a linear kinetic visual novel. It's probably maybe a spin spin-off or demo really of a bigger branching visual novel. I live by the sword. I ran the macro several times. Uh, so we'll have a lot of games to cover and such. The path ends here. So here we have a JRPG game of no interest. Six dollars and ninety-nine cents English allegedly full on you. And one of the problems here is that if I don't go specifically in order, I won't see the page that is left open for a follow list. So it will be fairly easy to accidentally transition into follow list cleanup territory for games instead of looking at new games. $1.39. Also, if I'm just moving through the order here, there is... This looks kind of pretty. It's, it says it's a hidden object game. It's already on the fall list. Um, so yeah, this is October 22nd, 2021. So. Yeah, we'll have to re remind ourselves that's only a few months from a few months ago. And yeah, we have just kind of accidentally transitioned into um, into the ball list cleanup very accidentally here without leaving the tab open I specifically set it to leave the ta tab open here you have another visual novel from July which arguably I should put this in the, the world and I wish list at this point. You dare to defy the shadows. Hmm. Here's the, here's the thing I would say about Island Diary here. Is it probably doesn't have any adult content in it for the better or worse. And it's playing on tropes. So it, a squeaky clean visual novel here. Um playing on tropes, dating sim, that I think these same tropes will be touched upon doing just JRPGs. And once I start struggling to play more JRPGs, I think I'll fairly realize that, oh, I don't need the cat girl trope. I don't need that because that's just something that will exist regardless. Here we have a VR game. Here we have a top-down twin stick shooter bullet hell game that looks good, but it's early access. I also had the number of games 
that we were looking at from the fall list. Um, this one still needs more time. I, I reduced the number by quite a bit. Now this one's a fairly old game and doesn't seem like it has any relevance. So we can remove this one. I don't really want to be that generous. I mean, this doesn't even look that terrible. Maybe I will be this generous and give this a little bit more time, but yeah. You can see that this was updated or information on it was updated. Here we have a VR first person shooter game. So it would very positively, arguably makes any other VR first person shooter game in comparison to this. It looks worse than this, something that you should get rid of. Hmm. Into the Flames. Is this a VR game? No, but it's an early access game. Still looking for a game where you actually play as a fireman, either as an arcade style game or otherwise. Yeah, this game is mixed, so we can get rid of this one. Insurmountable is a survival hiking wall climbing game. Does this require VR? No, doesn't even use VR. Hmm. I'm not sure I really want to play a mountain climbing game. At a certain point, that's kind of all the, the Death Stranding was also. But people like it, so I'll put it on the wish list. I'm not being particularly picky as far as things making it to the wish list these days. And sometimes I flip between one and the other uh, attitudes on that. And probably should be more consistent. Hmm. Here we have something that needs more time, and it's a VR game. Let's see. Here we have pixely point and click adventure game. Which we can put on the wish list. If anything, I may actually be doing too much of a fall fall list cleanup here, and that may cause troubles with my macro. Uh, but it really wouldn't cause too much trouble. Here we have something that needs more time. Insiders. I don't think I want to play this kind of game. An open world survival game where you're in spaceships. The whole flying around space games are just not my my cup of tea. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Insect Adventure needs more time. Let's go ahead and play. The Inquisitor's Heart and Soul. Hmm. I'm going to give this some more time to get some more reviews because I remember this game, while it looked kind of cool, also kind of felt like it was pretty much a tech demo and not an actual game. This one, Inner Worlds, I think we have to get rid of. Honestly, I'm not even sure why it was on the fall list in the first place it definitely feels like it's a jill of the jungle clone um that being said it doesn't really feel like it's an old game it's uh, or if it is an old game it doesn't feel like it's a relevant game i don't feel like this is something that i played when i was younger or anything like that well whereas i did play jill of the jungle so I, Clearly, there's no real relevancy here. It doesn't even have three reviews. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, come on. 
this. The ordained hour has arrived. I'll take my magic up the notch. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. We'll see that. Ink Slinker needs more time. This one we can get rid of. This looks pretty bad. I don't know why half of these games are on the fall list. This one we can get rid of. It's still early access. I'm also not going to give things the benefit of the doubt because they're still in early access if it's been over a year. Because that there's too many games that are just abandoned in early access. Let's see. This one doesn't have enough reviews to be relevant. So that can go. We're doing actually a very good amount of flawless cleanup. This one does have over 30 reviews, but it still doesn't really look good enough. Yeah, raise my standards a little bit, get rid of some of these mediocre games. This one needs more time. Industries of Titans as a early access city simulator. It's still early access, so I'll give it some more time. I don't know why it's on the fall list in the first place though. Industria as a dystopian shooter. Looks good. Is it in early access? Is it VR? No? Okay. Alright, well, put that on the wish list. Let's see. This. This. Hmm. Four snowmen. Or five damage. Now I feel like crying. <laughs> this game needs more time. This game has no reviews. So it's gotta go. A lot of these military first person shooters really don't have any reason to exist in the first place. This one is mixed reviewed so we can get rid of that I might have a whole nother window open also I'll have to double check that one this one needs attack. more time Tonight, today was this weekend and today was also a great time to do flawless cleanup and uh, and just make the macros in general uh, this is a puzzle game this is this is good this can make it to the wish list because we know there's no news and that this was going to be a slow week anyways now is the time to do any programming the only thing that can really go wrong now is either i get crazy ambitious and start trying to program something else um or messing with my network or i find that there's some kind of bug that's just something i haven't noticed and have to try and tweak things uh speaking of my network i i even had so much time that i actually worked on setting up a backup and getting the backup to work i finally got that hard drive returned to me and replacement sent to me after after like two months that with the whole part shortage nonsense i think they were more than likely using shortages as an excuse to be slow um, and hopefully it's working i will say that i have a backup running i started last night and it was going very fast for a while there and then it really slowed down um and since i'm backing this up to a hard drive connected to my router i'm, I'm not doing any kind of internet security and in deep like uh, elliptical curve um encryption key stuff because encryption in general just takes up more cpu and more ram and 
there's just not enough in the router. I will do that with my server whenever I get around to working on my server. Uh, but yeah, I'm just doing simple Samba shares and simple FTP um, things internally only. So as long as somebody doesn't find a way to hack into my network, that should be fine. But if somebody is inside the network, they could potentially snoop on tra backup traffic, which would be basically all the files. So that's not really what you would want in a proper network or office local area network but inside a home for the ease of setup alone it's what I've chosen to go with I'm not gonna say it's a good choice um, do I have anything else we can even play not really because I'd have to get the runecraft cards to work These default decks probably haven't been updated on Shadowverse in a very long time, and that's more than likely why they're not not succeeding. Um, but yeah. Even getting some backups going would be helpful. Um, I'm basically abandoning the Windows built-in backup software though cuz that just doesn't ever work. Just you and me. And instead using like Free File Sync I believe is the software I'm using which I think is better to use FTP. Well, it should be SFTP or FTPS, but oh, Yep. Yeah. I'm testing that out. What I didn't work on is potentially speeding up my network on my router and I kind of want to just leave everything alone for at least a week if not a month. And theoretically I bought a refrigerator uh, on a slick deals deal but so many of those slick deals deals have been cancelled I wouldn't be surprised if it actually never gets fulfilled and delivered. Which that's going to suck because that means potentially I'm going to have to spend a whole day sitting by a phone to see if things are actually going to be delivered or not. Hmm. 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 Anyways, back to video game news in Sound Mind. Looks like a horror shooter. It's overwhelmingly positive, so we'll put it on the wish list. We have Inner Eyes. As a card game, it looks a little visually rough, but not terrible. $3.99 Chinese for Lanio. We'll put that on the wish list. I really would love to cover. A decent Chinese game so I can just say hey as much as I have to crap on the low effort garbage Chinese games they get published to Steam at the very least there is some good ones this game in depth in death I vaguely recall this being more mixed originally it's a VR game though so it stays on the fall list anyways the sword hmm. here we have impossible soaring which is just one of these flying around games which none of these really should make it to the fault list going forward impossible mission 2 is a game that i want to probably own the highlight just to highlight how terrible it is i don't think that there is an impossible mission one on PC though mm. I played this silence. game on NES um, as a non-official NES game I believe and it was a nightmare so buying this game and covering it for $4.99 is definitely just gonna be to own a game that's terrible 
um, to talk about how, how I once played a terrible unofficial NES game. And I guess that's probably why I should just stay on the follow list and I should think about it some more. Uh, here we have a real-time combat RTS game that doesn't look particularly well received. So we can remove that from the fall list. And I guess generally when I'm doing a fall list cleanup, I can probably do a slightly quicker job of just looking at a game and saying yes, no. I probably don't need to consider the price too much. I probably don't need to check to see if it supports English because I would have already done that. I live by the sword. Take um, that. <laughs> Here we have a game that needs more time. Here we have a mixed review game, which we we'll have to get rid of. Which is a shame because some of these horror shooter games visually don't look terrible. Yeah. It's almost as if some games just go too deep into the idea of a a very pretty game and then they don't get the basics of the shooting down hmm. let's see cliffhanger ending negative review so what it seems like is this is really one of these cases where they've made a very short experience and you see these more pretty visuals one after another after another very quickly and it makes for a very short unsatisfactory experience almost like it's a vertical slice of a game than an, instead of an actual game oh, take that take that <laughs> take that <sighs> Which that, that's a shame. Certainly when that happens, when you have kind of vertical slices of games instead of a full game. Um, and the thing there, I would say more than anything is that it's okay to have a short game, just have a complete game. Don't have a cliffhanger ending on top of your two hour experience. Live or die. Mm. Nothing I can't handle. Oops. I didn't actually remove that from the fall list though. Now die. I should have done that. Uh here we have a game that needs more time. Sacrifice. Here we have a city builder Wait, game. Which I think I can kind of choose to skip a lot of these as far as colony sims I mean either I'm gonna put it on the wish list or I'm gonna just remove it from the follow list in this case I think I'll add it to the wish list since it is mostly positive but I think a lot of them I am going to just say no to here we have a VR game it's a little bit easier because I'm in a different window to accidentally come over to this point where normally that wouldn't be what would happen how much is in it for me all right fold this the ordained hour has arrived i better get a bonus oh. for this this oh. this give me peace so that definitely highlights why I shouldn't make these oh, in their own separate window. I did I think about help. doing that. A turn-based RPG game here called Iconfell. It's rated very positively, but frankly to my visuals, it looks pretty mediocre. Not with everyone around me. Hmm. And then in a funny way, this looks exactly what like what a 
NES remake game should probably look like is instead of going for the very zoomed out pixely look is zoom in a little bit more have the sprites be a little bit bigger it almost feels like this would be a Paper Mario clone of a game but honestly I'm not sure I'd play a Paper Mario game if Mario wasn't in it and I really just don't think there's here anything here that interests me this artwork looks interesting but that's not what it is um, yeah maybe I'm just not in the mood per se for this type of game but yeah this feels like it is a Pokemon game is what one of the reviews said and you know what it I'm not wrong about that but do I want to play an old Pokemon game no And then we're back to kind of the same news again from Video Games Chronicles. Uh, Hideo Kojima says he, his 2020 plans include video, radio, and a radical project, which isn't a, a teaser for an announcement for an announcement. Uh, Samsung's 2020 TVs will have built-in Stadia, GeForce Now, and NFTs, which uh, one of those things is Guy not like the slushy. other. Um, last thing we need is TVs just coming with stock software that is going to potentially try and Bitcoin mine or have viruses in them. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there is already something out there that's hijacking devices like smart TVs to Bitcoin land. I mean, even if it's not efficient, it's using someone else's electricity and hardware, so why not? Uh, Drive Cub's director confirms her reveal of his next game this year, probably in the Video Games Chronicles, and the PlayStation Now games have been announced. So, um, what are they? Let's see. Mortal Kombat 11, Final Fantasy 7, The Zodiac Age, Fury Unleashed, U-Turn, Super Time Force Ultra, Carnival Space Program, Enhanced Edition. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Gamatsu has Babylon Falls New Year Special TV commercial. Melty Blood Type Lumina has Aoko... Ozaki versus Shiki Tono gameplay. Yep. PlayStation Now, same article. And then um GameDeveloper.com had find out how Cyberpunk 2077 lit up Night City in this GDC session. Yeah. And then, so this is the second one. We have a new game called Bridge Team Ship Simulator, which doesn't look like anything of interest. It's early access for $29.99, English allegedly full audio. We have a game here called Snowman Adventures, which just looks like a low effort platformer jumper. 59 cents fight. English only. Here we have a game called The Chains That Bound Me, which is too zoomed out and too dark screenshot for its own good, so I'm going to have to say new, no to that. This one is just labeled soon. We're going to see more of this, in particular of games being opened by the macro um, that actually don't have release dates. Here we have a game called Outset, which 
2 does not have an actual release date. English only. Here we have another 12 Labors of Hercules game. Resource management. 959. Bunch of languages. Here we have something called Cursed House. Which looks like a pretty asset flip looking house. Hmm. Let's see. English and Russian seems to be a mouse and keyboard only game. It's, it's basically like a Gone Home Horror clone, I think. It's what they're going for. Mostly just an as I flip, I, I would suspect. I wouldn't be surprised if this entire house is just one purchase on the Unity asset store and you, they didn't even have to do anything else. Here we have a hidden object game called Legendary Tales Cataclysm. Which is by... Five bin games for six ninety nine. It's a problem of potentially naming your your company Five BN, which I assume is five dollar bin is the reference there. Here we have Tales of the Underworld: Legends of the Primordial Sea, which I think is too zoomed out for its own good. 1349 English and Chinese oddly labeled as a visual novel but I don't see anything here that actually says visual novel to me we have about 10 tabs right now open in this window so unless there's another window we are still going to end fairly early today rhyme beard here looks like nothing $11.04 English and German um, the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, which turns out I actually started my channel playing The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. So this, I literally just played the same game twice and have gone full circle there. I am not going to do that with probably any other game. And, and there is, in fairness, a pretty big difference in how The Binding of Isaac Rebirth runs in its latest version compared to seven years ago or whenever I started my channel um, but I thought I had played the original Binding of Isaac with Joy the Key and no I was playing Rebirth even then um, but yeah the reason I'm mentioning this is it is premiering kind of right now or just premiered I'm not sure if that was supposed to premiere that day or not if it is that just is a statement that if more episodes air tomorrow and the next day and the next day, then I just have like 80 episodes, I think, of Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Plus I got the DLC so I could get around to when I'm done with Fallout 3, going back and playing more Binding of Isaac. Once I start making enough content to get ahead as far as I want, I may very well get back to the idea of um, trying to have three things air every day every weekday also I may be getting more views go going forward now that we're not going to ruin our views with the reruns of Shadowverse um, If there wasn't an actual value in looking at all these games and live streaming, there, there is, there, there would be an argument at that point to, to giving up on the live streaming in general and just making more pre-recorded footage. Um, but at the moment, and I think going forward, there is just always going to be a value in looking at new games. But these streams could be shorter, uh, or at least take me less time. Yeah, if this is the only window here, we can be done in 20 minutes. Here we have a game called Crates and Mohawks, which 
Looks like nothing. Now, as far as Shadowverse, I'm not winning. At all. And that's still gonna be an issue. Uh, this Mix Island Remix Volume 2. We've seen this... This developer remix and re-release the exact same... Like... Demo of a game. Over and over again. That... But you can't report games for being low quality or repetitive. Here's a pretty low quality game. But yeah. If we were to come over here and flag a game. Let's see. None of these are, are in that category. Which, yeah. It's kind of a shame that there isn't a like or dislike button. It would make a lot of sense to introduce that. I mean, you'd, you'd be fairly late to the party, but just personal likes and dislikes buttons or flaming uh, flagging games specifically because, because of repetitive content or kind of scammy publishing of the same game. Uh, duplicate games like specifically if you could say hey I bought this game and I bought this game I played them both and they are the way too similar the, the same game I answer. that Hello, would Father. work Come fairly on. nicely particularly if you had to actually have played maybe not bought but played both games um, and that would be the only people that could actually review it Uh, moving on, we have a Big Fish Games, Hidden Object, Miss Holmes, The Adventures of McCork Ritual, Collector's Edition. 1259, English Allegedly Full Audio. Miss Holmes, is that the mother of Sherlock Holmes? I would assume as much instead of being the wife or daughter of Sherlock Holmes. Here we have a game on Steam called Yoga Master, which there might be something oh, to this. Are you in need of like, first of all, because you, you're noticing that this isn't like showing a lot of skin. Here you have a very, um, very big top and yoga pants, stretch pants. You, you, you're not. You'd almost expect it to be anime girls or bikini-clad girls if that was what they're going for. Uh, 2249, whole bunch of languages. I guess the real, and they're even saying only do yoga if you're 18 or older, which is probably a good recommendation. I don't know if there's really a game here though. And as I personally wouldn't do yoga following a video game and would actually want an instructor watching you. That's why they have all those mirrors in yoga studios is so that the watch the instructor can see your form and positioning same as when I have mirrors in like ballet it's so you can see yourself to make sure you're doing the form right whereas video games really can't do that um, you have things like ring fit adventure that try to do that with the small amount of feedback with the joy cons but even then it's fairly easy to be messing up the form and and uh, potentially hurting yourself. So I think generally exercise should probably be done with an instructor who's good, who knows what to look for, who knows how to help you get the form and shape. If you've been doing yoga for years, then why do you need this so software in the first place? Um, so even at that, the that kind of game slash software doesn't feel like it makes sense. It also probably would be smarter if it was inside a cell phone app more than uh, being trapped on a PC, which how many people can put a yoga mat in front of their PC? 
Moving on, we have a game here called Ambition, which kind of looks like a almost Chinese Prince of Persia uh, platformer hack and slash game. It is 99 cents, but Chinese only. Here we have a game called Start Move. New arrival incoming. Hmm. It's probably an asset flip game. Everyone needs an afterlife plan. Everyone needs an afterlife hmm. plan. Seems like you what, you drive around, around you shoot monsters that are fairly big. Hmm. Don't think there's enough polish here, or not enough variety in the monsters. The monsters are too big for their own good. Yeah, I'd have to say no to this. It's also free to play English Russian, so I guess check it out if you're interested. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Do that. Do that. How much is in it for me? Check here. Here. here we have a game called Jericho's Prophecies, which looks like just a weird western visual novel, short kinetic visual novel, 59 cents, I don't see anything here. What's funny though is this window must have been a little bit different because it's only now that we're getting the fall list to look at. And so here we have one from just a week ago, starting with J. And this one still needs some more time. Yeah. I don't really want it to work that way. This one we can get rid of from a fall list. It's just not relevant enough. Hmm. We only have about 10 of this. This one needs some more time if it's actually going to succeed. Which it very possibly won't. Or I have no I. regrets. Now it's chilly here. Blessed is the promised day. <laughs> Ooh, this is real. You like the cold? <laughs> yeah, we have a game on Steam called Jade's Ascension. Which I don't think looks like much of anything. Like a mobile phone Chinese game. 11.99 English, Spain, Spanish. As language is interesting. Am I mistranslating these visuals? Is this some kind of Spanish inspired game? No way. Clearly this is iconographs of Chinese symbols and Chinese dress. I wouldn't be surprised if there really is a case where I mean maybe I am mis just misinterpreting this and this is some kind of weird Spanish depictions. I guess maybe that's a possibility. Um, but on the other hand, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some Chinese companies that just straight up sell their games to some fly-by-night Spanish Portuguese company, and um, and then they just um, rebrand it and resell it. I don't know why this is on the fall list though, either. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Here we have Chuck Walker 
with Baron Oral, which you can get rid of that from the fall list. And we just transitioned into fall list. Clean up this one needs more time. Here we have a visual novel that's mostly positive. So I guess we'll put that on the wish list. There's no real reason not to. I have like two more tabs. And then this one needs more time. And then this one needs more time. All we want is one Runecraft victory and playing ranked is just never going to do it. I should re-roll this is what I should do. Um, that would be the real solution. By the way, I'm also not really doing the single player stuff and so I may very well miss out on that. Yeah, just re-roll this. That means one unranked runecraft would potentially get all the daily quests done. Hmm. Alright. So now I just need to hit the tab button. Like, uh, is it alt tab? Yeah. Nothing there, and that's totally in the wrong place. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Nothing there, and that's in the wrong place. Nothing there. Well, I've got nothing. And I answer. Ignorance will be swept away. Beat it, small fry. Absolutely nothing. alt tabbing all through this and so what I could do is I could run the macro again while in the middle of this or I could just go down my main twitter feed and I guess normally what I would do is I would run the macro again so let's do an experiment here where we run the macro and see how fast it goes. I probably did skip some things on the fall list, um, which means we'll just have to come around. And I also didn't program it to reset, so at that point, if it goes through all the X, Y, and Z games, it, it would more than likely just um, it, that that would more than likely just not be anything. Just see if this all works while things are while I'm clicking on other things and moving the cursor around. Like, the, the thought pattern here certainly is that it will either jump the mouse around completely or it just won't work at all unless I have the web page in the forefront. So, I may very well have to just sit in, like... I may just have to sit in silence and just talk to let the macro run because yeah it doesn't really feel like it's working feels like when I closed the macro tab um, 
it stopped executing the code. Nope. It's actually still executing the code. And I have to set the code to actually run very fast um, for it to be reasonable in its time frame. It may have paused the code though while I was not looking at it. In fact, I may have eliminated so many things, though I may very well have created that same problem that I said would never happen. Because if I got rid of more than 10 things, which I did, then it's probably now looking. Yeah. It is all the way to the S's. All right. So what I need to do is stop the macro and edit the CSV file from looking for it on line 800 to looking for it on, let's just say, 700. Otherwise, that was just going to go forever. And I clearly don't have that full robustness that I would need. Let's try that again. We ain't seen nothing yet. You can move the curse around, which is nice, but... You do have to be somewhat Screw careful. Corpses come in every shade imaginable. Okay, so it's done now. That was not too big of a deal. That being said, I am not playing when I should be playing. And that brought us back to the same Video Games Chronicles articles, which I think it's probably worth showing the pages that it's integrating this stuff from this is what video games chronicles news page looks like it just goes down here and Screw you. it uh come in every it, imaginable. after 15 points then you have to click next so i had to make a loop within a loop to say hey when you hit 15 um click the next button and then reset the link number back to the link number one or position one because it goes position one two three actually it's probably position two because there's probably some other link up here that's not being shown but yeah you can see with this there really hasn't been any news so it's not like i've missed anything and this cuts out twitter which was going to which was making things way more difficult than it needs to be um Gimatsu. Let's see. I also had to make and install a different plugin this isn't working solely by itself um i made a different plugin to specifically have these tabs from these domains always open in a new background tab because the macro itself would just be clicking on the link and moving that specific tab forward to the next page 
that's not what we need. We needed to open its own background tab. So I had to make install one plugin to say open the tabs in the background instead of in the foreground as they normally do. And install another plugin to say open in a new tab. Which, yeah, I've got a whole bunch of extensions for Chrome that I use to modify the, the way things work. Uh, but yeah, here's Gamatsu. Exact same situation. Newest article on top. Oldest articles down below. And after 15, click next. And then game developer. Like, Gamatsu and Video Games Chronicles basically are using the same WordPress theme or something because it's, it's exactly the same. Whereas GameDeveloper.com, you come over to this new section, it looks exactly the same also, but it is slightly different in that it actually is much like Twitter where it is automatically using JavaScript to load in the next page. Which made it a little bit more difficult to program this. You, you have to kind of make sure this one and this one gets loaded into memory before you click this one. The, that way it just constantly loads the next one. Otherwise it will error out and it will only see the first nine of, of them. But I got that to work. And then yeah, I'm only seeing a slight difference here as far as the followless cleanup An and the what's on steam listings in that it opened one what's on steam listing which it will just always open that one and then it's opened several fall listings here i'll give this one some more time without really putting a barrier between the two. This point and click adventure game, I guess we're waiting to see if there's ever a sequel here. Journey to the Savage Planet. I think at this point this has to go on the wish list. Here. And since I only opened 10 pages, each time we only have 10 tabs here. This journey of broken circle, I think we can say no to. Yeah, so the, the only real thing I'd want to change here is horror point and click. Um, I kind of want to leave this on the fall list just in case I get really desperate for a point and click horror game, but I suspect I would never actually get it. Um, Job Simulator is a VR game. This needs more time. Jigsaw Sudoku, I think we can give it some more time, but honestly, I probably should just get rid of it now. Jewel Match Solitaire Collector's Edition. I have no idea why this would be on the follow list. Get rid of that. I did find one game on the fall list that had just been completely removed from Steam. This needs more time. Um, and this needs more time. Um, so that gets very difficult to try and actually remove them. All right. So now I would need a portal craft victory and two sword craft victories potentially. I also need to play ranked. I don't know how much of that I really am going to play. If I'm going to do anything I should maybe take a little bit of a break and play more of these quests and try and grind out this because yeah unless I just keep playing this I'm going to 
miss out on all these animated cards. We have a month to do this, but I could easily forget it. And I'm not even sure I'm still going to want to be playing Shadowverse in a month. It's getting that desperate. And I really don't have any choice but to do a private match. But we don't really have a need to show any of that. Like, all I need to do right now, since news is short, is, like, go through my latest Twitter post, of which seems like there is only 12 new posts, and that's it. Um, Prime Gaming, I will say, I think we can show this off, has updated their free stuff that you get for Amazon Prime. Arguably, I'm... If not ne this year, next year, um, I might get rid of Amazon Prime in general. I'm not sure it's really helping me that much. Free shipping was really the only thing it cared, I cared about. But yeah, Fallen Order on Origin, that's pretty er early to get that. Total Warhammer, World War Z, Aftermath, um, Fairgo Indigo Prophecy, World Rally Championship, Abandoned Ship, uh, Paper Beast, Other Worlds, Two Point Hospital. Um, there is a question here. If I tried to use this origin code, through Steam, could I get it associated through Steam? I don't think so, but that would be interesting if I could. That that would definitely add some more value to this. Hmm. Apparently, the YouTuber, the completionist, who now works for G4s, it's his birthday. I have not been paying any attention to G4 at all. Um. And Giant Bomb really hasn't even done anything. They're still, I think, um, um, I think they're working on their Game of the Year content late, late in the January, which isn't a terrible thought. Hmm. But yeah, there's nothing new on Twitter. And if anything, by unsubscribing and unfollowing a bunch of people, I should be seeing more games and more things announced. And we may straight up have to try and search for a new source, new source, if it weren't for the case that I just know there actually isn't any news. If we were getting through with these streams in 2 hours and 15 minutes normally, there might be a problem there. Particularly since we're not getting the Shadowverse daily quest done. That being said, that shouldn't be a focus, really. My biggest concern right now is getting cricks in my neck. Like, even taking a couple days off, I'm still getting major cricks in my neck when streaming, even for a couple hours. And I need to figure out a way to fix that. Anyways, that's going to be it for this stream. A new era for efficiency and automation, certainly with potentially automated scheduling of a lot of videos, automated opening of tabs. Uh, this will give me back more time to play more games uh, or work on other projects that desperately needed to be worked on. Perhaps in 2022, I can stop putting things on the back burner and bring them back to the forward, forwarded burner and uh, actually finish some projects or just abandon them completely. Also in 2022, a lot of the chip shortages and gadget shortages are going to make it very difficult to start any new Raspberry Pi style you know, projects. Speaking of that, the RetroFlag GPIO G GPI case 2 at the moment seems to be pretty buggy. I wouldn't recommend it to even devs. I'm thinking I would prefer to get the other case that actually uses a Raspberry Pi 4 instead of using a 
compute module field for, which is what the retroflag GPI 2 case uses. Um, that means it will be bigger, but it also means that if the whole body of the machine just breaks, which it seems like the quality on the hardware is the issue with the retroflag cases, um, you still have a Raspberry Pi. You still have a Raspberry Pi that should work just fine. Uh, whereas if I had a compute module and nothing to put the compute module, module into it, that's a harder uh, thing to get back its usefulness from. All right, that's going to be it for the stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.